<clears throat> Alrighty, good afternoon everyone, my name is Benjamin, and today I have something a little different prepared. You're going to be probably curious why some of the votes, for example, in California and Texas look different than they do in Montana, Idaho. Well, it's because I had a little bit of fun, and fun might not be the best word to describe it, but... I decided to, everybody knows what the 2020 projections for the Electoral College, or yeah, for uh, Electoral College and Congressional Apportionment are at this point. Um, so I decided to try and project out for twenty the 2030 census and the 2040 census, and that's actually what these two maps are. And you'll notice I tried to get rid of the congressional districts because I don't know how they're going to be drawn in, uh, you know, 2021 and, you know, 2031 and 2041. <laughs> um, by the way, if you like, you know, the content and if you think uh, it needs to continue, you know, likes, comments, subscriptions really do help. I do have some stuff in the works. Again, you know, it is what it is because of the whole quarantine but you know uh keeping me on schedule is really nice um so the way i did this was there's a very good video by a channel called cgp gray that explains congressional apportionment and i used his spreadsheet that he had created for that and i projected out population to uh 2030 and 20 40 using the current growth rate, uh, current average growth rate per year, which, you know, from 2010 to 2019. Um, I was generous to a few states that had negative growth, like West Virginia and Illinois, and states that had very, very little growth, so much that it showed a 0%, uh, like Connecticut, I believe Rhode Island was in that same boat. Um but I projected them out, and then I went through, and I used a slightly different um, apportionment method than uh, the United States actually uses. The way the United States does it is I'm not even close to understanding the way it's done because it just seems like a convoluted method, whereas the way I did it was I basically took the... Mm, the least represented state added a district there and then resorted and continued doing that um, until I got to 435 seats. So as you can see, I'm just going to use red for states that gained seats. Oops. Darn it. States that gained a seat in this uh, North Carolina gained a seat, Florida gained seats, Delaware gained seats, and this is from their current allocation. Um, and of course, states that would lose seats are here. Uh, Obviously, those states gain. New Jersey loses a seat. Um, and Alabama also loses a congressional district. Now, if we change this to based off of the 2024 map, actually, Texas, Florida... New York doesn't, believe it or not. Um, Illinois, Pennsylvania. I believe Ohio and Michigan don't either. Uh, North Carolina doesn't change. Colorado and Arizona don't change. Oregon doesn't. Oops, sorry. Montana doesn't change. And California, of course, would still lose seats. Um, everything else remains the same. So now if we go to toss up, just to show, probably should have done this beforehand, but you know, 
We go here, states that are gaining a seat from the apportionment from 2030 to 2040. Uh, Nevada gains a seat, Texas gains a few, Florida gains a few. Uh, nope, Utah doesn't. trying to look to see. Actually, I think that is it. Oh, nope, forgot North Dakota. North Dakota gains the seat. Um, and the states that lose seats from the previous one would be here. And lose a seat, I believe. Both, they all lose seats. Yep. And as you can see, based off of this, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it to from the 2024 projected apportionment. And actually I can pull up the 2024 apportionment. Get rid of the sidebar. Um, currently, states that are expected to gain seats are here. Uh, Montana, of course. Uh, Oregon. And all that looks correct. States expect to lose a seat. Yeah, Alabama as well. And that is it. All right. So, actually, uh, Minnesota would also be gaining a seat in this case. State's expected to lose seats. Uh, those would stay the same. Illinois and Pennsylvania boat, Oops, not Indiana. I said Illinois. <laughs> and everything else looks like it is, oh yeah, West Virginia would gain its seat back. It looks like same with uh, Rhode Island. Delaware would also gain a seat. So there we go. And then of course, based off of this map, what we can see is generally speaking, uh, congressional seats are, and the population is shifting from being centered around the New England area and the Mid-Atlantic, as well as the Rust Belt Upper Midwest, and it's heading, generally speaking, westward and southward, so kind of in this area. This is just weird because I switched apportionment methods. Um, but as you can see in the next one, the trend continues going this way. Um, I, if I projected this out for 2050, I would expect Georgia to gain a seat, probably North Carolina to gain another seat. Texas and Florida also gain seats. I would also expect Arizona, Colorado, maybe some of these Western states, Utah, Idaho, Montana, Maybe one of the Dakotas to gain another seat. Oregon to potentially gain another seat. I'd expect these states in this Rust Belt Upper Midwest area to all lose a seat at some other point as well. Um, and it's also interesting that if we look at areas that... Or if we put up the 2016 election results... Uh, onto the map. What we see is that generally, if 
the map stays the way it is in terms of where each party's base uh, sits, what we're going to wind up seeing is that, as a whole, Republicans stand to gain in the Electoral College. Their edge looks to be improving, so to speak, because of where their base is and where it's growing versus where the Democratic base is. And as a portion, or you know, as a concentration of the population, it is of course uh, going going from less populated areas. Seats are going into more Republican areas. Now, admittedly, there are parts of the region, for example, the eastern seaboard here in the south, and the Sun Belt, where Democrats are making gains. That's. Uh, fairly I think that's a fairly baked in trend at this point um, we'll uh, we'll obviously see what whether that lasts 100% long term um, even if we give all of uh, Maine to the Democrats they still wind up actually losing seats uh, from 2016. or they still wind up losing by an even greater margin. Uh, they'd actually lose by 311 to 227. Um, and actually, I'll go ahead and change that. There we go. There we go. See, problem solved. <laughs> but as you can see, if the map remains the same in terms of location of the votes, then we, um, it, or in terms of location of where the parties have their bases, uh, the Republicans definitely stand to have an advantage. And the best way to look about that is to, or to look at that is to uh, put up the Bush-Gore map from 2000. As you can see, it was a very narrow victory. I think it was like 271, 269. Um, or 272 to 268. One, one of those two scores. And as you can see, it keeps getting wider and wider. Each and every cycle. It was, yeah, 291. Now it's even more because Colorado and Arizona gained. Um, and if we do that again, what we're going to find is that, oh yeah, let's not forget the this one. There we go. What we see is that it even crosses 300. Uh, by the next, uh, <laughs> by the next apportionment, oh, uh, okay, it doesn't quite reach uh, that three hundred, but it it gets it gets really close, and. For the foreseeable future, a lot of the Deep South probably isn't going to go blue, so that should be really worrying. And Arizona, Utah, and these states, it doesn't look like they're going to lose too many votes. And Texas, of course, is gaining. Florida is, of course, gaining. And those are states that look like they may be trending. Well, Florida may be trending towards the Republicans, at least if the data that I've looked at is correct. And Texas, while it is trending blue... Um, it's taking a long time to get there. I really don't think it will be, I really don't think Texas is going to flip, um, until the 2030s, unless there is a massive, massive economic panic. Um, and when I say massive, I'm talking Great Depression level. Um, with a few exceptions, obviously each case is its own. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. 
Hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.